Grand-Rising, my friends. Welcome back. Thinking about you. You know that, though, already. And if you're new, pre-event, look at the Ethereum bird. Burn. The the ETH, the ETH, the ETH is on fire. We don't need no water. Let the Ethereum burn. Burn, Ethereum. Burn. (laughs) Ah, yes. Look at it burn. Well, you know, the price is going up and it's above 300,000, above a billion. That's good news deflationary. I, at the, wow. In the past hour, 422. Usually it's in the 300s if you're watching that. So, and that looked like it's low. It looked like it's starting to now get a new a new cycle going. How, how far back was this? 3.8 burning that block. 0.7 that block two. Okay, well, look. ETH burned in a block. I need to see how much ETH is generated per block. I don't remember off tops. If three is being burned in a block. Wow. The burn is... I think the market about to start going parabolic, but we'll we'll see and keep that for later. Market's doing better today. The, the Bitcoin is back up to 48,252. Before we get started, so I can do this and not think about this later. This is not financial advice. Not medical advice this is not legal advice this is not advice about extraplanetary matters anything that exists that you can think of you can't say you got from me and you want to have discussions with me if so you are a crazy person because you need to be making decisions on your own and take responsibility for it then people won't have to say stuff like this but people don't take responsibility for their actions so people have to say stuff like this don't do anything i do don't you know, uh, wa- watch what I do and don't do it. Right? You know, it's the, the expression, um, do what I say and not what I do. But no, don't do don't do anything I say or do. I mean, if you do what do what you like. From that digital underground and rest in peace to Shock G, of course. Rest in peace to Norm Macdonald. You know, died just uh, recently. Really like Norm's comedy. Ethereum at $3,565.28, Cardano $2.50, Binance $4.30, Tether is at a dollar. <laughs> Tether's always will be, it's a stable coin. It will always be at a dollar. That's why I skipped Tether, USD, Binance, USD, because these are stable coins and they should be pegged at a dollar. Now, some people will like think, okay, the market may go down, so I sell my bitcoin into tether and then when it goes down buy back into bitcoin and that you know if you're just wondering well how do you protect your gains in that way but that, that's a dangerous game to play in and of itself you know it's fees to transfer back and forth not you know depending on how you do it not you know too crazy or or, or you know it's nothing that will stop you um but but if you're wrong and the price goes up you have to buy less bitcoin with that tether you have now XRP at a dollar twelve. Solana is starting to starting to just slow down a little bit. Come like I said, get back in line with everybody else. That's not a problem. Everybody should kind of just chill and be happy, you know, fly and ride the Bitcoin boat. We know what time it is. One hundred fifty eight dollars and three cents. Polka dot thirty six dollars and thirty eight cents. Polka dot was having a good week up 30 percent uh, on the seven day. Avalanche has been killing it lately, up 50, 54% on the week to $56.84. Algorand has been down a little bit, $2.02. We're going to talk about Algorand today in one of the articles. Uh, what else we got here? Tezos is up almost 60% for the weeks, almost $7. That's getting near as high. I think as high as it eight something, if I'm not mistaken. There's a site where you can just look at the. I've been looking a lot at the DeFi stuff, and we're going to talk about that. So, Pancake Swap is at $22.32. And Uniswap at $26.95. All right, so crypto market is looking a little bit better. Stock market had a pretty good day today as well. Um, the Dow Jones, SP 500, NASDAQ all had gains um, in the less than 1%, but uh, positive is a positive. A lot of the companies here, and this is their top 30, 
earned the green for today. Nothing, nobody really majorly fell out. Companies who had some pretty nice, pretty good gains today. Um, Google is up a percent. And when they say, well, that's not that much. Well, you got to remember a percent for Google. Google is almost $3,000. So a percent is like 300 bucks. $290. No, 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 no. That's That'll be 10%. I'm tripping. It would be about $30, $29. Almost 30, 30 bucks today if you had some Googles. Uh, was anybody else? No, nobody else is too crazy today. So we will move on to, well, you know. You know what I'm going to say. <laughs> You know, but hey, I, I think every day think about the people who have touched you and made you a better human being. You know, gratitude makes us better, a better person. When you become grateful for what you have, um, also grateful for the for the things that you you don't you you haven't been taken part of because you know sometimes I told my sons when they were young, when I tell you no, you tell me thank you because it's something that you may not understand at this point that I'm saying that's helping you. Um, so with that, there's someone who has moved you and you feel grateful for, write something nice about them down in the comment section and forward them this video and say, Hey, look, look what I, Hey, listen to what this guy is saying, because he said some good things and I really appreciate you. And I'm sending you this with love. I bring you love. It's from the Simpsons. If you don't haven't heard that before. So, NFTs have Kathy Wood excited. We talk about Kathy. This is Kathy Wood. If I've never showed a picture of her on here, I believe, um, or if you don't know who she is, of Ark Investment. She has a um, investment company that talks a lot about manages more than fifty billion in, in assets. I think they may have the largest kind of investment company that you know is more. How do I say it? You know, there's others like BlackRock with like ten trillion. Uh, but in terms of active management and their investment, I think uh, I think Arc is up there is one of the bigger ones, um, and they look at a lot of what we talk about here: innovation, disruptive technology, kind of the exponential growth and what's coming next. So if you really want to find someone who can kind of steer you in the right direction, definitely um, sit in the court of King Kathy when you get a king, Queen Kathy when you get a chance, and. Um, and, 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 and kind of, you know, let, let some of her wisdom rub off on you. So here she's talking that she's keeping an eye on the explosive growth of non-fungible tokens, although she doesn't hold any. At a conference held by Skybridge on Monday, Wood talked about her favor for async art, an NFT platform that allows users to buy pixels for digital artworks and create layers on them. I was walking when I heard the CEO tell his story and my smile went ear to ear because I said, man, this is going to be so explosive. She was telling uh, Andrew Ross Sorkin, uh, CNBC host. This is how I felt when the Internet first came about. However, Wood says she currently doesn't hold any NFTs. She, you know, she talks about how she expect Bitcoin to be a half a billion dollars within the next five years. She also says she her confidence in Ether has gone up dramatically and that she would do 60 40 if she was putting her money in. And I believe they say, OK, yeah, Ark, I think we may have this later on. In the week. Ark Invest is allowing one of its funds, the next generation Internet, to invest in Canadian Bitcoin ETFs. And also, Ark, I believe, has helped create a Bitcoin. I think they want to try to get a Bitcoin ETF too here in the States. So, Kathy is, is like in the NFT market. Um, Keep an eye on it to figure out how these big companies are going to find a way to get in. It's about branding. So, you know, how, how, how important is branding and advertising in this world? This makes Algorand worth taking note of. But Algorand, a seemingly, seemingly lesser known cryptocurrency, has been raging for the past few days as the blockchain is looking to compete with the king of DeFi blockchain, Ethereum. The problem with Ethereum people have why no, there is even a hunt for someone else is the prices to do each exchange has gone up so much, you know, past what they thought it would be when it first came. And they're, and they're working on solutions for it with another uh, Ethereum improvement project that's going to induce sharding, which will allow it's going to reduce 
the transaction fees, but also reduced rewards to miners. So the miners are not too happy about it, as you can imagine, because they've been eating high off the hog for years off um, the, the miner fees and the, the transaction fees for Ethereum. Apologize for that. The so, but uh, Algo, A L G O, Algorand has been making gains, and so why has it been going up so much? Well, is the information that came out about a huge a huge reason behind this jump was the partnership of El Salvador's government with Koi Banks. This partnership with enabled Koi Banks to build the government's blockchain infrastructure on the Algorand network. So the first country to have Bitcoin as a legal tender is now using the Algorand network to build out its governmental infrastructure. Now everything could be lies. I saw the stole stuff with Walmart and Litecoin, so take everything with a grain of salt. And they think this is what's causing the, the, the coin to perform well. And the reason they said it, it while it doesn't uh, support interoper, uh, interoperability with Ethereum dApps, it's supposed to be quicker and cheaper, and they're going to start building their own NFTs, uh, decentralized exchanges on its chain as well. So it's similar to Cardano, Tezos, Ethereum, with that uh, Tron, with those abilities for smart contracts. So keep your eye on Algorand. If you, we've been talking about it for weeks. A lot of stuff we've been talking about for weeks just went nuts with price. Uh, Cosmos tripled. If you start buying Cosmos when we start talking about it tripled in price, Algorand was I think 80 some, 70, 80 some cents, and now it's uh, $2. So that's tripled in price almost. It was up to like 250 or some, 220 something. Uh, Tezos was $2 or something, to six, almost $7 now. And I just said, look, these are the ones that's on Coinbase that if you just hold it on Coinbase, you get interest on it. You get Tezos rewards. You get Algorand, Cosmos rewards. Not even just Coinbase. If, I mean, move it otherwise. One of the ones you can you can get by staking it, you get interest on it. Cardano's a big one, too. We'll talk about that. I say get an Exodus wallet. Stake them there is the easiest price from going on Coinbase to Exodus under your control. The, yeah, well. We can we can be all day about these things. Um, maybe I'll do something like that where I just kind of go through my how I go about setting things up, keeping it safe for me and and you know easy to to manage and deal with. A slice of the Pentagon's internet space that was taken over by a Florida company minutes before this is a long headline. Minutes before Trump left office has been returned. But the mystery remains. Now, I had heard about this story months back when it first happened. And, and I have some theories and I'll say what I meant, what they are at the end. Like, you know, it's all speculation land. But you know that, you know, you get butchering of words. You get um, ramblings of a, you know, of a, of a human being and crazy wild speculation land. So right before Trump left office, it was 175 million IP addresses, more of the Internet than some of the world's largest Internet companies, including Comcast and AT&T, were handed over to this company called Global Resource Systems, headquartered in Plantation, Florida. I used to live near Plantation, Florida. If you told me that there was this company that, and if I remember the story back then, yeah, yeah, exactly here. The company appeared to have been founded in the fall of last year, right before the election, filing paperwork in Florida in October and was incorporated in Delaware. I think it was the day minutes, yeah, the minutes before the official end. And so literally on January 20th at 11 something o'clock in, in the morning, this company was given, I think at the time it was estimated almost like a fourth or a third of the internet IP addresses. So it, this goes into a long story, we're not going to go to it now, but the IP addresses we use, that's only a start smart a little a subsec a sub a small subset of what actually could exist. But the United States government controls what people can use as internet addresses. And so this is how the world is. Like I said, anybody think it's fair, you you know, you know how I feel about that. And this company was given about, let's say a quarter or a third of that, right? 
before Trump left office and, you know, never been used before. Like, you know, it's just big chunks ain't been used. And they say, hey, this big giant chunk, that's equivalent. Not, I'm sorry, it's not a fourth or, or, or a third of the internet. It is a fourth or a third of what was being used as the internet at that moment in time. So how big the internet can go is a whole other story. But that what was being used at that time globally, their chunk was like, boom, I'm going to add another big giant piece of the pie in there. And so what was that for? <laughs> you know, when you hear it like that and you think of it, you're like, that's kind of odd. The news of transfer broke space in April. Department of Defense told the Associated Press was being used to assess, evaluate, and prevent unauthorized use of Department of Defense. That's what DOD means. Internet uh, IP address space. But they couldn't explain why this company was giving this new, newly formed, you know, without it, it just seemed like fly by night. How could they even had the necessary security clearances performed in time? Uh, now, you may have had, you know, it's, it, it, so, OK, a bit of speculation right now to this thing that more than likely it was people who already either worked in the government or previously in this sector who had a lot of knowledge of how to do all of this stuff. So maybe they already had their security clearance. Okay, understanding that. Now they're in a new company because so they probably came from different organizations to, to form this new company or, or maybe from one even organization in the government, now a private corporation. You, you mean to tell me the security checks on all of that information is done within that damn amount of time? So it had to be some somebody pushed through and thought it was super important. Why is it so important? Pentagon spokesperson told the outlet that the cybersecurity program started by the self-described SWAT team of nerds from the Defense Digital Service had ended and confirmed that the Internet space was back under the control of the Department of Defense Information Network. So the Defense Digital Service established a plan to launch the cybersecurity pilot and then transition control of the initiative back to DOD partners. So that's probably exactly what it was. And I'll get what speculation land is in a second. And that's what happened. So, oh, we got the end. So what's speculation land? You know, we've been getting our butts kicked, it's, it appears, apparently, via cybersecurity lately. And we're not, we're not dummies here. You know, we know we got to buckle down and get it cracking. I read a hypothetical article, I forgot, some months back about what a potential war in the future would look like. And it said that when it starts, China's AIs are initiating these attacks in our cybersecurity network, which it, it had put back doors and traps and everything to lay the war, not knowing that we had a completely artificial internet that the Chinese and the Russians thought they were hacking into with everything was fake from social media to, you know, official work of these, these individuals on this internet. So when they thought they were initiating a sneak attack, it was, it was like, if you ever, you know what happened during World War II where the Germans thought we were, had this uh, huge army with General Patton coming in way north of where we actually landed um, for D-Day in Normandy, in Omaha Beach. The, uh, so, I ain't trying to, you know, blow our stuff, but, you know, what are, what are we doing here? You think we stupid? So maybe this was to get into the habit of seeing what it would look like to spoof <laughs> the Internet for adversary to where they thought they were in our system, cutting off our pipelines, our electricity, you know, our hospitals, ransomware, the individuals. And it was all fake. And then we lit into them. Well, like I said, speculation land. Now, this ain't this is crazy. And, and the reason why I picked this article is because it's important that we start discussing or, or we haven't deep fake technology, artificial intelligence. And that's where that whole um, where you, the opportunity I, that, you know, I see in those non fungible tokens, the NFTs is the metaverse. This parallel metaverse is going to be created because that's where we're going into. Like as much people want to fight and argue with it. And you may not be part of it. That's fine. But to not know that that's going to exist and be a huge part of the future and what that could mean for you, you and, and creating this generational wealth. You know, years ago, I said, look, I'm not going to be that person that to not make money because I felt like something like a, um, 
it didn't meet my high standard and criteria for what had to be perfect in this world. You know, maybe what I think is perfect is not. So, but look here. So Palestinians rage at capture of fugitives, doctors, fake grins on their faces. These individuals had broken out of a jail in a week and then they were captured. Um, and this is other pictures of them when they were captured, but it apparently on social media where the men have been lionized in recent days, this, you know, this, this article may be a little bit biased in a sense, as national heroes doctored photos, Dr. Fake, oh, they talking about doctored fake grins, that's what they mean. Doctored photos were disseminated to fugitives after they were captured, turning their true life grim and tired expressions into defiant grins to the camera. So this is gentlemen, you can tell you've been, you know, struck on his face there and with the smile and, and airbrushed it out. I mean, this, these are deep fakes. Look at these two guys and how they got them to look like, yeah, we good. We good. This is the world. You may not be able to believe what you see on television in real time. They, they're already working on live streaming deep fakes. Uh, I don't know if about a week or so ago it was this clip of Snoop going around. You know, it, was a, it, it wasn't Snoop. It had his head on somebody else's body, but dressed in a very way that, you know, would get uh, Snoop's, a lot of his passes revoked around in certain spots, you know. But this, this, is, this is the future. And, you know, all that was happening between the Palestinians and the Jewish Israelis is always heartbreaking because, you know, at the end of the day, you're like, y'all you, realize y'all come from the same lineage, right? You want to argue about that? You can argue about that. But you realize that we all come from the same. The Mossad social media account, I don't know if this is real or not. We can't even... I'm, yeah, if y'all know the Mossad, that's, that's kind of, I would say, it's equivalent to our CIA. And, and, and yeah, yeah, our CIA, our Central Intelligence Agency. Um, and we can't even. <laughs> Is that where we at nowadays? I'm not on Twitter. I, I'm, I'm going to probably create a Twitter account because of this so that I can, um, it seems like it may help the channel, but the... Uh, they talk about we can't even the the Mossad Mossad. But hey, look, the Mas, don't you don't want to cross the Mossad. So if they come at you, it's done done time. You know, ninety nine out of a hundred probably. So for them to say it like that, it's like you know this, these is killers. <laughs> not a bad way. You got to do what you got to do out here. You know to protect your people. I'm not I'm not opposed to that. You know. Unless you're being unfair with, you know, you're going after people who don't deserve it. That's a different story. But if people wrong, wrong Joe people and, you know, consider and, and keep themselves a threat. Hey, threats got like I told, I think I discussed on here. My, you know, what I learned in Chong, you got to you got to destroy your enemy. You got it, to. It's about your intention. How you see them as one of cruelty. You got to when you destroy that tree. You got to tear the roots out of the ground. You know, <laughs> I can't. We're not going to leave you that to come back for another attack. That's not how it works. But more happier news: Space Perspective wants to take tourists on balloon rides to the stratosphere. Now, look, this may be, you know, versus. I mean, Bezos rock, and, and the reason why I brought this up is also the the, the inspiration for a flight that's going to happen in about two hours. Right now, um, that's going to be awesome. And, um, you know, I was going to wait till tomorrow and maybe I don't know if I have a story about that set up already, but. Yeah, yeah, I have a story. So tomorrow we'll we'll talk about that. Hopefully. Um, no, I, I know. I know they'll be orbiting the planet by that point and we'll be able to talk about it in real time. But Space Perspective, this new company, um, they're testing flights of their spaceship Neptune, which is just a big giant balloon. That's six hour flight, two hours up, hang out. Super high up. How high do, do they say? I mean, stratosphere. I mean, they're not getting, I think, up to um, anywhere up near the uh, Carmen line. So they're going to about, they're doing it in this way, uh, maximum altitude of 100,000 feet. And in miles, that's about 20 miles. And so the Carmen line is about 62 miles. So you would have to, you know, it's three times higher that Bezos and, and Branson went. In their vehicles, their rocket in that in a rocket plane. But this one, you go up two hours, hang out up there high in the mug for two hours, 
and then come back down. That seemed like it'd be way fun. It's like the pilot and eight people, bathrooms and a bar in there. Now, this seemed like this would be something cool to experience. Now, if you can't do what they're doing in um, right now at SpaceX, what they're, what they're going to do in Inspiration 4, would you literally go up on a rocket in the orbit in a in a in a, <laughs> in a crew vehicle and orbit the planet for for a couple of days yeah if you could do that yeah yeah that'd be the best you know um i don't know what the bathroom situation is like on there i'm sure people have asked that question i have to look into it but that would be awesome but this is probably the second best in terms of um, the experience to be able to just for for a couple hours. You're not as high as the as you are in Blue Origins. Um, I think it's the New Glen or the New Shepherd. I think that was the New Glen. I may be mistaken on that. Uh, or um, what, what's the name of the uh, plane for something two spaceship two. Is that what his name is? The plane for Virgin Galactic with Branson. But nah, this yeah, this you could chill up here and chill, you know, kick it for a little bit. This this is what this would be nice. They looking at um somebody else. I, I didn't see this. somebody else got another balloon for seventy five. But this this these uh, space perspective are looking at probably about one hundred twenty five thousand. Now eventually, hopefully. We may even have just the technology to just become every day where you just going back and forth around a planet or to other stellar bodies in our uh, solar system, you know, and we, we we would just look back and laugh at how we used to look at this. But now this is we this is what we dreamed of. A lot of us growing up of what's next. You know, we're explorers by nature. I'm not going to keep you all today blabbering too much. I just want to say I love you. You love you. And God loves us, and that's all that matters.